I work at the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore, also known as STSCI. This is the home of the Hubble Space Telescope. This is the home of the James Webb Space Telescope as well, <laughs> and future missions. So this is where we run those telescopes. We get together, we find the ideas, we find the crazy ideas to do the weirdest things with those telescopes, like staring at a patch of sky for 10 days. That's the Hubble Deep Field. And that came from a chat. A few researchers said, well, what can we do? Well, stare at the patch of sky for 10 days. And that was a major discovery. So this is where things happen. The James Webb Space Telescope in particular is a, an effort carried out by NASA, but also the European Space Agency and the Canadian Space Agency. Galaxies are photobombing every single image, so <laughs> every image is a deep field. I love Saturn, but look! <laughs> There's a galaxy in the background. My favorite galaxies are really those that when you see them in the image, they are dots or smudges. <laughs> because these are the very first galaxies. And these are the ones that tell us how everything got started. As an astronomical data scientist, I work with scientists to gather their needs for visualization, for analysis of the data. And then I talk to the developers and, okay, how do we make this happen? Luckily, it's not anymore astronomers who want to be coders. <laughs> it's really engineers, they can make everything happen. And that's really my favorite part of this job, is getting the input from the scientists and then go to the developers. Okay, the scientists want this. How do we make it happen? And they give me options and prototypes, and then I get to test all these things before anybody else. I was one of the first people to see the first data. That was very exciting. I worked with those first data to calibrate the instruments. I was the first to say, this mode on this instrument works. It was just one mode on one instrument compared to the 17 one. So imagine a lot of people doing the same thing. But that was very exciting. And I've been working on JWST things since PhD school. There was a large effort here at SCSCI to build a calibration pipeline to do a first pass on the data. And they built this pipeline as an open source software. So it's up there on GitHub. And if people want to contribute, they can contribute. It's generic for all the modes that are on. So maybe it's not perfect for a very specific science case, but it's good enough to show you what's in the data and then the users can still do their own patches and their own piece of software to get to the specific calibration for their specific science case. But again, it's open source. So people can take it and suggest algorithms and code for us. Without open source, I don't see it working. Open source is necessary, especially because it's getting more and more complex. So not everybody is an expert on everything. You need the expertise from other people, and how do you share code if it's not out there? There is a lot that the community can contribute, not just the people in the building, not just the people at uh, ESA or CSA or SCCI or NASA. There are so many young developers out there with bright ideas. We need to get those ideas and give values to those ideas and open source help us to do that.